our immense pleasure to welcome our speaker for today, Mr. Part Satpati, Business Head Zenith Leisure Holidays Limited. Mr. Satpati is a veteran in planning and executing MICE activities. He currently is associated with Zenith Hospitality and is heading North India business for his company. Prior to his assignment, he was associated with Cox and Kings Limited for 20 years. He chose tourism industry after doing his MBA from Pondicherry Central University. Having worked briefly with a startup selling caravan holidays in India, he then moved into corporate side of travel industry and has grown along with the industry ever since. While successfully mentoring and leading the largest dedicated mice teams in the travel industry, he continues to help corporates in planning and their mice activities and provides a plethora of information and platforms for the service industry. It's an honor to have you with us for today's session, and I request you to please uh, proceed with the session. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that brief introduction. Hello, guys. Uh, uh, though I cannot see any one of you, but I, I assume uh, you are there online. Uh, as I was telling Bandita ma'am that I personally prefer uh, having a very uh, one to one interaction with with my audience when I when I present, when I speak. Uh, that is that is how uh, it always works. Uh, uh, better uh, for me and that is where uh, you know my thinking cap uh, goes off and I, I start uh, uh, visualizing things from your perspective. But I think I really need uh, some help from you because here the share button is not working for me. OK, uh, it says only meeting organizers and presenters can share. OK, I think there uh, has I, I'll just uh, I'm just looking into it, so I'll give you the rights. Could you just check some because uh, yes, yes, think, yes, yeah. now it has come. Yeah, okay. fantastic. OK, here we go. Uh, everyone, please. Uh, uh, I would request all of you to kindly uh, unmute time to time and uh, say yes or no at least so that I know I'm not talking to the monitor of my laptop and also uh, ask questions in between. Don't just uh, let it be a monologue because if I have to speak to you uninterruptedly, I can I can maybe go on for one hour or two hours. But that's not the whole purpose should be because you all are uh, students of the industry and all of us are going through a very, very bad time, unprecedentedly bad. Uh, we, we never had such kind, such kind of a scenario in the past. So uh, this is something which uh, nobody was prepared for. And uh, like you students, uh, we uh, from the industry are also learning from the past mistakes. We are also learning from what uh, has gone wrong and how we should be preparing for the future so that God forbid if some, something similar comes again in the future, we should be future ready. So my whole idea here is to be as brief as possible and to share my knowledge, my experience and the way I see this uh, pandemic and how it is going to affect uh, each one of us. So uh, I hope uh, by the end of the day you will have at least some uh, nice points uh, to carry back home and some ideas to to work upon. So here we start. So uh, this is exactly uh, about a year back when uh, we got to hear about the coronavirus and the pandemic. It started from China as all of us we know. Uh, it took almost four to five months uh, for the virus to spread across the globe and uh, to be declared as a, a pandemic. Uh, and then uh, the rest is history. All of us, we know what, what has happened, how it has uh, spread and how the entire industry has been affected. So before we uh, discuss more about it, let's, let's get into some data and uh, see how uh, we can uh, how do we uh, take it forward the conversation? Uh, I already have been uh, introduced uh, by your professor, uh, so I would not like to repeat 
uh, on this and I would like to move forward to the next thing. OK, so here are some data that I was talking about. Uh, see, the most important thing for all of us to you, me and your professors, your 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 families, your your uh, parents at home, they all should know that despite travel industry being one of the largest contributors of global GDP. We contribute about between 10 to 11 percent of the global GDP globally. Uh, every one person in 10 out of the world is uh, employed directly or indirectly with the travel industry. So uh, as a manpower, gen as an employment generator and as a GDP generator, we are always there. But unfortunately, we are also extremely sensitive uh, as an industry. So uh, that is where anything goes wrong anyway. Travel industry is the first one to get uh, hit by the same. Uh, as of date, we uh, in India, we have about more than 50,000 travel agents. We have got about 1.15 lakhs of uh, tour operators, about uh, 15 or 1,000 adventure tour companies. There are close to 9 lakhs uh, transporters. Uh, more than 50,000 hospitality companies and about more than 5 lakh restaurants. I mean, and then it goes on and on. All the data is goes and on and it's, it's, it actually it employs close to 4 crores uh, of uh, population in, in our country. And uh, this uh, these statistics that I have given here, it does not include the airlines industry because the airlines again industry will have again huge uh, or the railways. Uh, they, they will again, they probably by, by taking the airlines industry and the railways industry, these uh, numbers will uh, probably go double. Uh, but the unfortunate part is today about 90% of the travel trade uh, employees in our country, either they are jobless or they are on a pay cut. Uh, so that's which is a very, very grim situation. So I can understand from uh, your point of view, you as uh, students who are uh, pursuing hospitality and you uh, were looking forward for a great future in this industry and now everything must be re really, really um, shocking for you. I, I know it, it, it's, it's come as a future shock for all of us, so I can understand what, uh, what you must be going through. Uh, but uh, let me assure you that our industry does have a future. The post COVID uh, the, the the annual meeting by uh, World Tourism Organization on 30th of uh, September, they have come up with a report. And uh, on that, after taking the COVID and the pandemic situation into account, the prediction is that there will be about 1.8 billion tourists in the next 10 years time, which will double by another 10 years time. So that is, these are all uh, scientifically researched figures. So uh, that's that's actually good news on a long run. Maybe for the next one year or two years, uh, the, the reshaping of the industry will take place. So there will be a lot of new things that will come up. Some of the old things, old habits will have to get uh, rid of, but I'm sure uh, maybe by 2022 or 23, things will be back in absolutely normal and then there is sky is the only limit for us. So there will be again, uh, you will get to uh, see a lot of uh, money being pumped into the travel industry, a lot of, lot of uh, new uh, startups coming up, a lot of new industries, lot of business houses coming up. You will again see the cheap affairs. You will again see a lot of uh, OYO type affordable hotel rooms. You will also see uh, things like Uber, Ola coming up and all these things. So uh, to quickly to uh, discuss the uh, the future scenario, uh, whatever it is today, you can you can divide it into four uh, projections. So now nobody knows, neither you know, nor I know, nor the scientists, nor the economists know what which way it is going to be. But for sure, it will be one of these four that you can see on your screen right now. So the first scenario, which is scenario one, is that the let's hope for the best and uh, let's hope that the travel industry swings back to normalcy in probably uh, mid of next year. So that will be uh, uh, the way it had gone down. It will it will go up the uh, similar uh, in a similar pattern, which is a V-shaped uh, recovery. And uh, 
if that doesn't happen, the second scenario would be that uh, travel will happen, but the mass tourism will not happen. So where you used to see group hordes of people, groups of people traveling together, availing uh, cheapest airfares, cheapest accommodation because of the group bookings. So that will not happen because people will definitely be uh, interested not to go into crowded places and they will be uh, maintaining social distance and all. If that does not happen, then the third scenario would be. Hello. Join. Hello. OK. Uh, if that does not happen, then the third scenario would be uh, the big is beautiful. The big is beautiful in the sense there will be because there are a lot of closures that is happening. A uh, lot of travel agencies, lot of travel companies, a lot of small hotel, hotel owners, uh, transport companies have sold their business because they could not sustain um, such a pandemic and the economic uh, repercussions out of that. So there are uh, the buyers of that are actually consolidating their position. So there will be uh, instead of 55 travel companies which was there before the pandemic, probably you will have 5,000 or 10,000 or 15,000 travel companies after the pandemic. And so that they will become the consolidators and they will have the largest uh, share of the market. And uh, so that actually does not affect the the recruitment of the manpower because in totality they will need the same or more number of people to hire for. But that will be uh, the, the, from the industry's perspective, it will be a change. So basically, instead of 20 airlines, you might have only four playing. Instead of 20,000 hotels, you will have only 2,000 hotel chains running all over the country or all over the world. So there will be a huge uh, uh, acquisition and merger that 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 is expected it might happen and the last scenario is none of these uh, scenarios work for and you start from the scratch which is like you know you start from the atoms to the bits so everything will have to be started from the scratch and uh, the entire process will be new no one knows which way the entire process is going to go to but it will be a, absolutely a new process so these are the four uh, things i personally somehow uh, feel that we will be uh, between scenario two and three. Uh, it's, it's definitely not a scenario four or de definitely not scenario one. Uh, it will be somewhere around two and three. So uh, that's that's where I would like to put my bet on on the graph. <coughs> OK, now to discuss that a little um, in depth, uh, I would uh, recommend if you would like to make notes of you can make notes of these you can now recall these to ask questions later so here it is uh, if we now discuss on the different scenarios that we spoke of so uh, in detail so what happens is it's it's all about the human resilience it's about like you know coming back to uh, the feet you fall down you get up and uh, you you come back to your feet and then and uh, be brave to face the world once again the way you have been doing it all over. So now uh, in this what happens is here most of the airlines will come out of the crisis because uh, because the market trend is at such or the government uh, pumps in money to help them. Uh, the the uh, experience of travel on air it will decline because uh, because you know I mean today if you if you travel there is a longer process of uh, check checking your temperature, your your uh, safety, security, uh, the baggaging process has changed, the check-in process has changed, so uh, it takes longer. Uh, the ground transport, which is happening, like the like the coaches, the the cab companies, it will also recover because to go to the airport before before going to the airport, you will have to have a Ola or a Uber, so. So that means uh, before you board onto the flight, you are boarding onto the Ola or Uber for first. So they also will recover because of this. And uh, if if this kind of a situation goes uh, forward, then probably in two years time we should be registering uh, 2019 plus 10% uh, or 15% of business in the next two years time. Uh, so this is this is the most hopeful 
scenario for the transport. I have not included the railways uh, part here because uh, globally most of the countries railways are government controlled and uh, they are not privately owned. So, so the government decides when the railways will ply or not. Uh, coming to the accommodation sector again, uh, the hotel industry. What what the best thing will be? Hotel industry will learn from the mistakes what they have done, so they will not make the mistakes, similar mistakes, and they will uh, integrate their rates. What was happening till last year was the hotel will have a different uh, rate on their desk. They will have a different price on their uh, website. Uh, certain OTAs like Make My Tree, Piatra, or some other website called Hotels.com and all will have different, different, different prices. Uh, because they were, uh, there, there were different uh, ways to procure those rooms and sell in the market, so which was creating a huge co confusion in the market. So this is going to be very, very consolidated. So you will have one price uh, available everywhere. Uh, there will be a lot of digital investments in the uh, hotel industry, which you can already see. There are, well, I mean, uh, contactless uh, travel and contactless check-in, check-out. Everything is already happening. The hygiene standard have gone up to 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 to, to the most possible uh, the best possible way uh, travel demand again is uh, something which is very very relative and it may um, as the transport demand goes up similarly the travel demand also will pick up and uh, there were these uh, OYO type rooms or Airbnb type of rooms which were not very standardized uh, globally uh, they will adapt uh, to a very standardized process um, because because of primarily because of the safety standards, safety hazards to take care of it. Now the last part is the distribution of uh, the travel industry. Now what happens is uh, there will be a lot of new insurance products. There will be a lot of new money back uh, guarantees uh, because because uh, people will always be skeptical uh, skeptical in putting money. Uh, because traveling is not a cheap uh, commodity here in India at least. Traveling abroad is a very, very expensive thing. So people would like to put uh, insurance into the travel bookings that we do. Um, also, there will be a lot of uh, search engines or there will be travel related search activities. They will see a uh, upsurge because now people will be much more focused on what they want to see or what they want to do in a destination. Also, uh, there will be a uh, uh, mega uh, online travel company like maybe Google or Amazon. They will come out uh, with with new kind of ideas or new kind of distribution channels, which wherein they will be consolidating uh, most of the services globally, and so so that our traveler gets everything uh, on his mobile handset, and he doesn't have to go anywhere to book anything. So this is the best case scenario which uh, may happen. Now jumping onto the scenario two, which is. Uh, which I was talking about is the death of uh, mass tourism. I mean, uh, people will not uh, try to uh, would like to travel in groups in particular. So that is because again for the for the transport sector, because there will be a lot of uh, strictness in terms of health and social distancing protocols. There will be a uh, you already are aware. I'm sure as a uh, tourism student that the business travel traffic has gone down to uh, the historically low points and people are preferring working from home and people are using such kind of uh, Zoom and uh, meet uh, facilities online and they would they're not going on business travel and long haul tra traffic is also falling because people are not interested to fly uh, 10 hours, 20 hours uh, on board a flight because that is where they think that it is susceptible to catching a virus. So uh, this is where because of the group travel, if, if it doesn't happen, then probably you can take out straight away one third of the business out of the projection level here. Same applies to hotels, but only thing is in the hotel thing uh, because of the strictness in the hygiene and safety standards. So uh, uh, the, 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 the quality of your accommodation and the experience related to will increase and slowly that will uh, see a larger footfall onto it. And also what will happen is uh, 
big cities will see lesser reservations and smaller towns and the smaller resorts in far off places will uh, see uh, a splurge in the bookings that they uh, that they have uh, things like homestay uh, things like uh, in the villages or in the mountains where you have these uh, accommodations rural accommodations and all this will this will definitely see a, a much much larger uh, demand going up and uh, when it comes to distribution by uh, uh, subject here, uh, there will be a uh, uh, the existing travel companies. They will uh, slowly perish. They will slowly go out of business because what will happen is the airlines or the hotels or the transport companies they would likely they would slowly they will adapt to a very strong B two C process approach. And in that process, uh, the, the travel agents who used to uh, work as a facilitator of services, who used to get different products and create a bouquet for you and give it to the customers, their dependency will decrease and so slowly they will eventually, uh, there will be a slow death for them. Same goes with the online uh, uh, travel aggregators. Uh, now, uh, instead of uh, 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 going on a price war, what they can do is they can improvise the uh, and automatize the, the services to enhance the services uh, or, or the customer experience. That is where they will uh, have uh, a lesser disruption disruption to face. And also what will happen is with uh, this kind of situation now uh, with the technology coming into picture, there will, you will see now a new set of online travel uh, aggregators coming up. Uh, maybe by the beginning of 2021, all of us will hear about them and we'll read about them. They will have a very different uh, strategy, very different approach to the product. And uh, I will put on my money on them that they will uh, immediately gain the public's attention and they will uh, be there in the in the in the in the market with a very strong presence. Uh, moving on to next, the next scenario would be where uh, I was thinking that you know there'll be a bigger uh, aggregators and playing everywhere. So uh, this is something where uh, there'll be mega up, uh, mergers or there'll be mega up, uh, acquisitions and. Uh, uh, they will control the entire market so that, that it could lead on to a monopoly, but uh, eventually it ends up in helping the customers in their, uh, uh, their, their, their demands. It meets the requirements. Same goes, uh, goes with the hotels. Uh, in, the, in the hotels, what will happen is the, the small or medium sized hotels will, uh, will become uh, you know, the, the target acquisition targets for, for major hotel chains and then there will be a lot of uh, independent family owned hotels that you see if you go to any uh, holiday resort whether it's a seaside resort or a mountain resort you will see like you know there are small hotels 30 rooms 40 rooms 50 rooms so they will become part of some global chain this is uh, where <coughs> uh, the you will see a uniqueness in terms of product quality and branding and it will be uh, available throughout at any geographical uh, length and breadth. Uh, when it comes to uh, distribution, again, uh, widespread defaults and increased market concentration of the uh, online travel uh, aggregators landscape will be, you know, it will be, there will be, uh, there will be very strong consolidation which will happen there again. And because uh, the travel, the regular, the, the conventional, uh, travel companies, the tour management companies, they will be losing out on the business. So most of them will start shifting on to the online travel aggregation part. So which will make the OTA landscape larger and the travel company landscape smaller and uh, shorter. And then let me discuss the last scenario, which is the fourth scenario uh, where every uh, everything around us will be virtual. I mean, uh, so so what happens is today we were all uh, doing a man to man or a person to person blood and flesh business uh, wherein like, you know, everywhere there was a human touch. Now there could be technology can take over the whole process 
and uh, because it is new, so it has to start uh, from the scratch. So what happens is in this case, uh, almost half of the airline industry capacity will be wiped out. Um, so uh, if the things can be such bad that uh, like uh, what used to happen 40, 30, 40 years back, only the rich and famous could afford flying. That also may happen. Uh, the the, the uh, Airbus 370s, the double deckers and the jumbo aircrafts, uh, they will extinct because that will not be the uh, in flavor in the market. Uh, then a lot of airlines will just uh, focus on doing a point to point flight so that because that that uh, helps them uh, maintaining a better yield factor so uh, these are the things which could possible which is the least possible scenario out of the four but that is, this is still a possibility and the same goes with the hotels because the in hotel the hospitality industry which has already probably crashed and it will uh, it will see the same kind of a thing about uh, half of uh, the hotel uh, rooms or the hotel inventory that is available all over is uh, probably going to shut down or the change case. I, 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 I live in Delhi. There are there are there are few hotels near the place that I stay. Uh, the hotel which was next to my exit gate of my colony, they have converted it into a hostel now just about 15 days back. So because they were not getting bookings, and so the owner uh, gave it to some doctors and now they, they have started a hospital there. So similar uh, things will change. Uh, it will happen and you will see such kind of changes happening. Um, only exception would be like, you know, you go to hill stations or you go to uh, remote beach locations where you see those individually owned properties are still there and you still uh, get to use them. Uh, when it comes to the distribution network, most of the small and medium travel intermediaries will uh, they will just die, and uh, because they, they or if they exist, they will be remain such a negligible smaller uh, component in the market. And uh, some of these online travel aggregators will manage to cater the uh, uh, high value clients. I would say. Uh, to buy, buy adapting into uh, higher technology virtual platforms and uh, they will manage to sell their products in using uh, that and then uh, what will also happen is in the technological front because there will be so many things you will hear about technology and technology getting into uh, the travel atmosphere and they are taking control so what will happen is uh, there will be uh, there will be techno tech companies who will be the power brokers in 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 the travel trade today. If you ask somebody who which is the largest travel company in the world or which is the largest airlines in the world or which is the largest hotel in the world, probably all of you can uh, give that answer very quickly because this knowledge is there in the public domain. Uh, there could be a situation after three or four or five years that uh, there could be a technology company like uh, Google or uh, Microsoft or Adobe uh, who owns uh, such kind of things. And uh, so you, you are going and uh, flying on Google and staying in a Microsoft hotel or uh, <laughs> stuff like that. So, so this is also a very remote and rare but a possibility. So these were the four uh, basic scenarios, whatever it is going to be in the future, it is going to be one of these. So now let's let's uh, let's just uh, talk about uh, uh, how how things are going to be or how things uh, look uh, at right now. So as they say, uh, you know, when when the greatest uh, danger in times of turbulence is not the turbulence itself, but it is to act with yesterday's logic. So now what happens is what uh, this means is we never had a COVID-19 ever in the past, so we did not exactly know how to handle it, how to face it and how to handle it. So today if we try to realign ourselves to, to face the situation with the knowledge that we have, existing knowledge that we have, 
probably we are not going to succeed. This is what it means. So a new problem new needs a new approach and a new solution. This is very clear. So anything that is old, tried and tested can give you a solution on a short term basis, but on a long run basis, it will uh, not help us as a as an industry altogether. So what is going to happen? I mean, I'm sure you must be this. We are already into month eight or nine of uh, COVID in India, so we must have uh, read uh, so much about it. Your professors must have taught you. You must have uh, met with so many guest speakers. A lot of people must have uh, given you a lot of insight on this. I know you you all are aware of uh, everything that probably is uh, mentioned in this screen that that in future uh, it is all about going to be sustainability. Uh, our journeys when we travel, it will be more inclusive. It's it's not that we just plan and hop onto a flight for a vacation. No, this is where people are going to be very, very meticulous in planning. Uh, people will travel on small communities. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll on my next slide. I'll uh, elaborate a few of these points and uh, we as travelers, we will now uh, focus more on quality rather than quantity. Uh, we already are seeing a change in the Indian travelers mindset where they are. Uh, they are uh, focusing on uh, road trips because road trips are uh, somehow it has come back to the flavor. People are uh, just preferring it and uh, uh, people are I know I know people there are people in my family who have driven thousands of kilometers in the recent past uh, from point A to point B. My younger brother drove uh, from Kerala to Punjab uh, just because he was bored staying at home uh, and he did not want to take a flight. So so I know a lot of people who are uh, taking road trips. Uh, travel advisors will become essential. This is something this is one of that's that's the reason why I put a star mark here uh, with with so many changes happening with so many uh, new things coming up. Uh, the end buyer, the end end uh, user will get confused, and that is where he will need some proper guidance, and that is where your role comes into the picture. So you will be very much sought after as a travel advisor uh, in the industry. So be rest assured about it. Uh, so as a traveler, again, uh, we will take road trips. We'll try staying close to home. Uh, as I said, planning uh, trips will be again. It will be joyful. Uh, it'll, it'll, uh, there'll be there'll be a lot of changes which will happen, which will happen instead of it happening over a period of time. It will happen just instantly. Like right now, the airlines industry is shut down, shut or the hotel industry is virtually shut. The day you it opens, you will see immediately there are certain changes which should have taken place. So. Uh, also, with all these changes happening and a lot of uh, competition going out of the way, travel could become unfortunately unaffordable for many of the many of uh, the people. Uh, what is also happening is uh, uh, this is something uh, globally which is happening, which is uh, called as the revenge tourism because people were stuck at home for five months, six months, eight months. So now they are taking a revenge. And they are stepping out of uh, home with a lot of courage and they are going to a place to spend a uh, weekend or four or five days as a vacation. Uh, so this is this is what is happening because uh, we unfortunately we had forgotten how fundamental travel was to our, our uh, life and how uh, sustainability is very important to the entire process. It was it was all about numbers. It was all about uh, fast life. So now everything has come to a standstill and slowly things will uh, change and uh, all over the country you are you as you all must be aware uh, global international travel is almost nil right now. A lot of countries do not want to receive tourists from other countries because of the pandemic till now. They're not sure what they're going to do for the next two, three, four, five or six months. So what is happening is people are traveling domestically within the country. In our country itself, people have started traveling. The, the hotels in Goa are reporting 80% uh, in factors. The hill stations uh, around uh, 
Dehradun, Masuri, or Shimla are going 100% full as on date. And uh, same goes with uh, some of the popular beach resorts across the country. Uh, so, so the but end 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 point here is whatever happens uh, at the end of it, uh, people will travel because we are all human beings and we are very curious. See, it's it's very simple. If you want to see Taj Mahal, you have to go to Agra. No matter how much of virtual tourism you do online, how much of uh, you know. Uh, best gadgets that you have in the hand to see the videos or audios or everything, but still the feeling comes when you go there. So eventually it will happen. It may, it may take a month's time, it may take six months time, but it will happen. So, uh, but on for the most unfortunate part is nobody can uh, guarantee when is it going to happen. So now the most now something uh, very important that is uh, something which is uh, related to you all in particular because you are all uh, part of the trade and you will be banning our industry in the near future. You will be looking for jobs or you will be starting your own businesses. Uh, what are the skills that somebody needs now? Uh, to be to be uh, future 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 ready. I mean these are all which is which are always there. Uh, but it has become very, very important uh, today. Like uh, if I have to go back to my office and if I have to uh, conduct an interview for a set of people, probably these are the qualities that I will look for in, a, in an applicant before I decide on uh, hiring him or her. So the first is uh, efficiency. How efficiently the person is uh, 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 going to handle things, how efficient, how quick, how fast, how creatively he's handling things. That is what is uh, going to be very, very important. Second most important thing is multitasking. Gone are the days you cannot say that, oh, I am an operations person, so I cannot do sales or I'm a Forex person, so I do not. I know nothing about visas. No, right now you have to learn different uh, tasks, different skills and you have to be multitasking. It can be as simple as it is. You can be uh, you can be a uh, 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 individual working in a hotel where you you are res responsible for the front office, but something goes wrong in the electricity department or something goes wrong in the finance department. You should be able to handle that then and there wherein you will be saving some extra manpower cost to your company. So this is something which companies are going to look for. Uh, smoother operation, how smoothly I handle my things. Am I a, a messy person? I'm, uh, do I take a lot of time? Do I involve a lot of people in the decision making process or I handle it smoothly? Cost control. How how smart I am in controlling the expenses of my organization or of my own company. So controlling the cost, the managing the best of the outputs with the least expense or the least investment is going to be a quality which is going to be the most sought after quality in tomorrow's market. Hygiene perspective. How hygienic I am individually. This is this this is tomorrow when when the market opens up and when you start going into the market, some of you may go for interviews to looking for jobs. You will see that hygiene factor is one of the prominent factors, which probably was not very important till now in the in the in the uh, job market. But right now people are going to judge you. How, uh, how hygiene you look and how hygiene you make them feel about yourself. Uh, scrutinization to the work, how minutely you scrutiny the work and how it's it's a, it's, it's it's like uh, doing a foolproof job. So you nobody you you are uh, you have to be a, a, a manager where uh, a second person does not have to look after your job. Your task is given to you. You do it. You finish it. Bingo. Job is done. Innovation and creativity. These are very, very important now. How innovatively you can think, how innovatively you can plan things. Uh, 
what kind of innovation can you bring into your desk workstation to your organization that you are working for how creatively you you come up with uh, ideas and plans and implement them these are all going to be very very uh, strictly be be uh, monitored while while uh, you go through any interview process dependability if if a person see this is a very clear thing nobody wants to uh, hire a person who is not dependable but in 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 all practical uh, reasons now uh, i mean if i am going for a job i have to make sure or i have to ensure my uh, interviewer that he can depend on me so it is in my hand that how dependable i come across as and uh, last but not the least is the customer friendly approach because this was always there this is there right now and this is also going to be there in the future now after we know about these generic skill sets that 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 we have for future ready let us let us uh, discuss a little more about uh, on on the skills that the industry wants okay so now uh, if i am tourism i am a tourism student or i am a hotel management or aviation student i have learned something on transportation accommodation and travel management on that but what are the uh, you know hard skills and soft skills which which will help me in ensuring uh, that that i grow in my career uh, faster and I, I i am there in my job uh, despite another pandemic coming in future so the pointers are there so you have to learn revenue management how do you manage the revenue of an organization that you are working for you have to learn the skills of budgeting and forecasting so these are certain things which probably uh, in the companies the managers and above used to do but right now it will be uh, expected from the management trainee level uh, they have to contribute on on such kind of things i have to be very very uh, highly multitasking and i have to have cross selling uh, cross cross selling skills sorry for the uh, spelling error there uh, i have to be multi skilling and uh, cross selling skills skilled i need to know more than one language preferably a foreign language because this is where uh, uh, the importance of me being in the travel trade is coming uh, is making a difference because when we are talking about touchless travel and uh, all those things depending on uh, different kind of uh, gadgets and softwares and mobile technology and all so what happens people just come and they don't see each other they don't look into eye to eye each other so it is going to be like you know, going into a zombie land so this is where uh, something is very very important and uh, knowing more than one language or fluently knowing more than one or two language is going to be a uh, uh, of some added advantage to all of us uh, next thing is like you know understanding the technology and most importantly understanding is one part next part is the leveraging the same to deliver what is required so whether i i i am aware that there is a technology which is available but can i put that technology into use to 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 help help the end customer so that like you know things happen faster smoother uh, in the least expense and the for best way so knowledge of that is also uh, very much required here uh, people who are like digital experts who are who are uh, uh, having specialization on you know tele uh, tele sales or any kind of things where which which helps in added revenue generation for the organization so as i said like you know the, the days are gone when you you say that like, oh, oh i am a i am an expert in visa so i cannot sell forex or i am an expert in operations so i cannot do sales or i am a sales person i cannot do operations the days are gone so we have to be multitasking and we have to every individual right now is going to be uh looked into uh the in in into the hiring uh, process on uh, the parameter of how much he or she is going to help in uh, adding the revenues 
then there are certain soft skills like the way we communicate uh, whether we are entrepreneurial in our uh, uh, lifestyle or or, or or on our behavioral skills uh, then then understanding the concept of uh, responsible tra travel because a lot of companies a lot of uh, countries uh, slowly are going to adapt to a very strict uh, rule and regulation uh, that will come into effect in the next couple of years time so uh, till date uh, whatever was happening particularly in india chalta hai attitude that is not going to uh, happen there was there was a news that i read uh, yesterday that somewhere in karnataka there was this guy who had gone on a vacation and he was going back home and they had ordered pizza somewhere and they were eating pizzas on the car uh, while driving and then they stopped the car and threw the uh, pizza boxes from the highway downhill and then left they left so which this the, this act of theirs was recorded in the camera and which was uh, relayed ahead and these guys were uh, stopped some 80 kilometers ahead from the spot that they had thrown the pizza boxes and the traffic police made them go back 80 kilometers pick the pizza boxes put it back on the trash can and then go home so probably this is something which is happening in india for the first time so that's why it became a news but uh, as i said everything has a first time and then little once it becomes a norm then uh, all of us are need to be ready for uh, such kind of responsible travel because these these are the things which are very absolutely uh, in practice in places like south korea japan and part of taiwan so but this is something for the first time i heard in india sustainability responsible tourism are going to be the keywords and uh, they are going to be the key parameters uh, while uh, uh, people hire uh, young talents from the market Uh, other than these, uh, there are there are uh, allied fields where which are also, uh, but the, there are there are skills in allied fields which which will also be sought after, which are if you are if you have something about healthcare management, if you have some knowledge about insurances, if you are good at retail management, these are the things which are going to be of much much benefit to all of us. in the entire process so what is uh, so we have been talking i have been talking about all this process how things were and how things are and how it is going to be so if we now we are going to uh, in the next couple of slides let us try to zero down to uh, uh, to the uh, all the points what is it going to happen and how it is going to happen very quickly uh, much more skilled and versatile employees with greater reach and success will be sought after so again versatility high skills multitasking are going to be the keywords in future to attain the new normal industry is relying heavily on the keywords which are local sustainable and hygiene please understand i mean i cannot work in a hotel or i cannot work in an airlines or a travel agency if i myself is i'm unkempt if i have not combed my hair properly if i have not shaven or if i have got long nails and i have not used moisturizer or if i have got bad body odor or bad mouth odor i mean these were the small little things which probably out of politeness people were not uh, making a hue and cry about but believe me these are going to be very very strict uh, everyone is going to be very strict about all these things so i mean how sustainable i, I am as an individual that will decide how my approach my how professionally sustainable i will be towards my industry that i work for and same goes with hygiene and other things <coughs> excuse me so the focus is going to be on uh, local tourism that uh, that is something the trend has already come in and uh, all of us are we are seeing around again safe health hygiene uh, related travel there will be a uh, regained focus on a few things outdoor activities self drive family uh, travel reunions reunion in the sense not the family reunion there will be reunion travel for for maybe a reunion of your uh, institute or, or or your college or your school or if you are part of a, 
uh, hobby club. So there will be a reunion travel for that. So so this is going to be a norm. So people will pay more attention towards the culture and heritage. So so far cultural and heritage heritage related activities were uh, probably coming. Uh, it was coming on the last on the bottom of the bucket list that uh, the travelers, particularly the Indian travelers that they used to have. But now this is going to jump up to, uh, to the top. As a traveler, I will, I will prefer all of us will prefer to go to a secluded um, remote place uh, rather than going to a big city with skyscrapers. So the focus will be back on individual family travelers and small groups. So gone are the days where 200, 300, 500, 700 people were going and you know the full page long advertisements ki Europe chalo ek lakh mein, pandra country tera din mein. I don't think these are going to happen anymore. Uh, fortunately, uh, then uh, there will be a uh, slowly all of us. We will come into uh, uh, the accept and accepting the fact that uh, the, the international tourism is not going to be the same what it used to be. So now there are a lot of rules regulations that have come into picture. So uh, so so gone are the days where like you know you decide in the afternoon and pack up your bag and uh, take an international flight and go to the destination. No, it, it probably it will not happen anymore, at least not in the near future. So there will be more technology based approach towards customer satisfaction. We have already discussed about the contact based technology, about automated processes that are uh, available everywhere, enhanced cleaning technologies and smart door to door transportation. Uh, there are companies which are working. There are startups which are working on the, the, this entire process. What happens is they now tomorrow if you if you book a vacation to Singapore, so uh, what happens? You go, you step out of your home, you call an Uber or somebody from your family or someone drops you at the airport and then you take a book flight and then same process happens there. You take either a train or a taxi, go to your hotel and all that. Now what happens is there is there, is, there are startups which are coming to 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 uh, club the entire travel process in one single key, wherein uh, there will be a amalgamation of uh, everything. There will be uh, contactless technology. There will be enhanced cleaning. That the entire process will be automated. So these are the companies that are going to come and rule the travel uh, scenario in the future. Uh, the growth will be slow, but year round travel. I mean, what what is happening is right now uh, most of you are in Calcutta, right? I, I assume so for you. What is the nearest uh, holiday destination? So either you go up north to Darjeeling or you go down south to Diga or maybe you go to Puri and Konar some a couple of a few hours of drive. You are there. So but all these places, if you notice, they have a season. So there is a high season, there is a shoulder season and there is a low season. So now what will happen is because of the COVID, so because the inventory is not going to be utilized 100% at any given time, so there will be a through year, throughout the year travel which will happen. And the travel now will be attached with one more thing, which is purpose. So if I do not have a purpose of going to a place, I will not travel. So everybody now will travel with a purpose. So that means it will be there will be a refined uh, interest group which is going to come in the future that we as uh, insiders of the travel uh, industry, we need to be prepared to to handle them, to, to cater to them. Uh, lastly, there will be environment friendly uh, and there will be a lot of renewable energy and uh, there will be a lot of focus on uh, uh, reduction of carbon footprint. These things were there. These are there. People have been talking about it for the past four, five, six years, but nobody is actually uh, worth taking it seriously. But uh, believe me, oh, next year onwards you will see these uh, very, very uh, clearly and very strongly. <clears throat> so I must also uh, update you here because on 30th of September 2020. Ma'am, am I? Uh, Overboard with time, or am I? I'll take another five ten minutes. Sure, sir. Sure. Uh, uh, there, 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 there are a few questions, few from, questions from the end of our students, students, so we can start. Yeah, I, now. I think I think I'll I'll take five minutes, then uh, we'll start the questions. Okay. Sir. Okay. So okay, uh, quickly. Uh, 
World Tourism Organization has uh, recommended these points to all of the to all the countries across the world that this is how they have to prepare for a COVID post COVID tourism uh, uh, all over the world. So what is happening is the focus is on border openings and the repatriations. Uh, so so it's a going to be a slow process. So visas will be given to select people. There will be there will be a lot of scrutiny uh, at the border crossings and uh, while applying for the visa. So there will be uh, a very well defined common standards for health and safety all over the world. So there will be uh, uh, more focus because what happened was when when the pandemic came globally, millions and millions of people were thrown out of job. So the WTO is very, very uh, concerned about the job safety of uh, tourism workers. So there are going to be schemes uh, to strengthen the support for workers. Uh, there, there are plans to incentivize travel. If you if somebody wants to travel, he will feel or he will get incentivized for, for the decision to travel. Uh, there are uh, promotions to uh, for tourism, starting with domestic and then regional and then uh, slowly uh, go to global. Uh, also extending the digital infrastructure to all over. Like you know, so far, globally the digital infrastructures are limited to the big cities. So taking in them to the last person standing in the rural areas is going to be a focus area. Integrate digital identity. So what happens is this will this will enhance the contactless travel. So everybody you walk through the airport, the cameras take your picture. They 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 know who are you are. They understand whether you have a visa or you don't have a visa. They have your health record. They have your vaccination record, and you just walk through without somebody anybody stopping you anywhere. So this is going to happen. Rethink the workplace. So uh, whether there should be offices. Whether there should be companies, there should be hotels where thousands of people sit down together, work together, or there should be a different new approach to it. That is also going to be very, very uh, uh, something that the governments need to work on. And uh, lastly, stimulate sustainability practices because this sustainability is going to. It has come now. It was there. It was never practiced, but now this time this is something which is going to be practiced by each and everyone very clearly. In a nutshell, the future of uh, uh, travel industry. So there are there are the, there are the very few things. Social distance travel is going to be there. Technology is going to take care, take over everything. So detailed and timely information will come to you. Uh, you don't have to have dependency on uh, any individual or any company for such kind of things. Market popularity may change today. Goa is the most popular destination. After three years, you may come see some other destination becoming the most popular. Less groups, more FIT travel will happen. Travel experts will be more sought after than ever. This is the point, guys, I was telling you. You need to prove yourself to be uh, as an expert in the industry. You have to have the specialization, expertise in something. Then you will be sought after. So you will not be just another resource. You will be known as a resource and people will run after you to hire you. A shift in transportation expectations will also take place because what we were expecting by paying 40, 50,000 rupees, 80,000, 90,000 for an air ticket and we were expecting that it, there should be good food, there should be good selection of movies, uh, the seat should be wide and all. Uh, travelers are not going to expect all that because they have come to uh, a better reality right now. And emergence of niche reunion travel, the, the community travel, the family travel. These are the in a nutshell. These are the seven things that are going to come into the picture very soon, maybe next year. <coughs> OK, these are my personal uh, predictions, which which is basically a not sell of what I have been talking about for the past 40, 45 minutes or one hour. So uh, first thing is coronavirus is going to stay here. It is not going to go away. So all of us, we need to be very careful when we need to understand how to take care of ourselves and others in terms of hygiene and safety. We have to uh, pay our focus on the domestic tourism because that is where the explosion is going to uh, happen. We have to make ourselves very, very technologically advanced. We have to learn the technology. We have to ensure that we understand the technology and we are uh, we are ready to explain that further to the travel for a safe and uh, secure travel. The interest-based travel, the family community-based travel, these are going to be born. 
why I uh, I would like to take one more minute in explaining this uh, to you. Say, for example, out of you 60, 70 uh, attendees here, some of you may have uh, some common interest. Some of you may must be avid bikers. Some of you must be uh, uh, from the literary background, the people who write songs or uh, write books or read extensively. Some of you must be uh, foodies. Some of you must be nice, good uh, cooks and chefs. So these are all, some of you must be uh, from music. So now what will happen is, these are the special interests which the future travel, future group travel will happen on these lines. So what happens is if you have a specific interest, please my suggestion, my request to you, all of you is please work on that and work towards attracting your customers or attracting businesses on the similar interests. Say for example, if you are a, a cricketer yourself, so please pay focus on sports tourism so that in future you will you yourself will get to play get to travel uh, with interest to with cricket and do something uh, of similar interest same goes with music same goes with biking same goes with adventure travel so this is something very important for all of you uh, in the accommodation, as I was saying, there will be a completely new order which is going to come. None of us, we know how uh, it is going to be in the next couple of years time, but definitely the changes have started taking place. Uh, activity and experiential vacations will be the key. So wherever, whichever destination you are going, the experience that is going to be provided there, you as a travel company, you as a hotelier or you as a transporter, what is the experience that you are going to provide? What are the different kind of activities that you are going to provide? These are going to be the key. Uh, the, be the better part is like, you know, as I mentioned, the hotels will have a very better and former control of the inventory because today everybody ha has different prices from the same hotel. Tomorrow you will see one single price and across the platforms. Online travel uh, aggregators will lose their stronghold because uh, they were playing around with these uh, bulk bookings. Travel agents will see a decline because most of the travelers will do do it yourself. Uh, travel bookings digitally. Uh, there will be a lot of interest on green travel and uh, sustainable travel. You will see a lot of uh, uh, growth in in in, uh, uh, in in amongst the travelers and amongst the public who are uh, interested uh, or, or concerned about the environment and about about the holistic growth of the industry. Uh, business travel and daily community will, will go down. Uh, video conferencing has gone up. The only one thing which are the biggest uh, conferences and uh, the meetings that happen globally, uh, which are not happening this year, uh, it may start happening from next year, but uh, the conference and uh, uh, meeting uh, business of travel trade is going to be there. It is it is definitely going to be there and it is not going to go away because end of the day we are all human beings and we are very social and we would like to do business by meeting people uh, eye to eye. So I think that's uh, that's it. OK, this is something some wild guess and predictions that I had made uh, what will happen in 20 years time. So you will have these uh, smarter end to end ground transportation. You will you will we can see the return of supersonic air travel, which was there 20 years back and was shut. Probably this will again happen. Virtual reality will uh, is going to take over completely. We, we might have uh, trains or road transportations running more than 500 uh, miles an hour speed so that the air travel component is completely or slowly knocked off. Uh, most of the airlines, travel companies, train companies, uh, transport companies are going to work towards a carbon zero future. Space travel, this is going to be very, very interesting. Anyone who has interested interest in uh, astronomy and uh, space, uh, please pay attention here. Uh, space tourism is going to be the in thing in the next five years time. So if you have interest, please accumulate the required skill set so that uh, you get to work with one of such uh, firms in future. So in a nutshell, these are uh, this is what uh, it is. Thank you very much for your time and attention. I think I have taken uh, almost uh, 20 more minutes of uh, the scheduled time. I'm open for any kind of questions right now. It was uh, uh, it was very nice uh, speaking to you all. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for sharing such you know, valuable insights in a very concise and interesting manner.
and uh, serious state not every day that we get to listen to someone having such a vast experience in this industry so this is uh, very very useful to us for our students and uh, now i shall be uh, requesting uh, the questions to come up please uh, the ones uh, the students who have questions you can please pose the questions so uh, sir can answer them uh, for first uh, our final year master students they may please ask the question hello good evening sir i am madhupriya from masters uh, final year am i audible yes yes you are audible yeah so my question is looking at the current scenario uh, what uh, what can uh, what are the skills we should develop uh, right now for uh, to be in the mice industry looking at the current scenario so you are no, uh, you are unmuted uh, okay you asked mice right okay yes. see mice uh, is not going to uh, it is going to take a little longer uh, to come back uh, the, because meetings is definitely going to be there. It is meetings, conferences. It is going to be there. It will, um, but it will take a little longer. It will take uh, the first re uh, rebound will happen on domestic tourism, self drives, homestays, FITs and all. Mice will take time. People have started traveling. One of my clients, they, they went uh, last week to Goa for three nights, four days to do a do, uh, in house conference there. But it will take time to happen. But for 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 you, if you are looking at uh, making a career in mice, uh, there are two three things that you have to keep uh, in mind. One is, please make yourself technology savvy. Uh, I mean, there is no particular software that you need to learn, and there is no particular hardware to learn. But you have to keep your eyes and ears open. What are the changes that are coming into the industry? I mean. Automation is one thing. Everything is becoming app based or web based. So you need to gain knowledge on that. You gain, gain knowledge and then you have to have hands on knowledge on that. So you learn so much that tomorrow you can teach me. Right. This is one thing. Second is learn languages. Whether it is an, another Indian language or whether it is a foreign language, the more languages you learn, the higher career perspectives you are going to have. Because if everything robots do and the end of the day, anyone who has the software knowledge to run the robots can become the king, but that does not happen in, in practicality, right? So there are like, you know, if you if you go out of uh, Calcutta and you go to Goa or you go to Kerala or you go to some other place where people don't understand Hindi, English or Bengali, I assume these are the three languages you speak to. So there is a need of a fourth language. So whoever knows that fourth language in a team gets the preference to travel there or to handle that task. So this is where it is. Third is uh, uh, working on creating your own client base. Because once you start working, whenever you work, you I assume you will uh, work. You either you start your own business or you work for another company. So what happens is you when you go and work for a company, you start attending to the requirements that are given to you by your bosses. So you go and meet your corporate clients. But in that process, please work on accumulating and creating your own client base. So the day you have more and more clients with you willing to work with you, that works as a step stone to grow further in the mice business. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, can we have the next question, please? Uh, good evening, sir. So my name is Suchandra Maldik. I'm from Bata 5. Uh, my question for the day is, um, how will India's fast growing outbound tourism market change? Sorry, can you repeat that, please, ma'am? Uh, how will India's fast growing outbound tourism market change? How is it going to change? It is. It has already changed. It has. Uh, it has already changed. Uh, people are not traveling. 
Indians are not welcome by any other country because we are the second largest COVID population in the world. None of the embassies are keen on giving us visas, unfortunately. But jokes apart, uh, it has already changed and uh, uh, there, are, there are three things. One is there will be longer process. So today when I'm, I'm to travel, I all I have to do is go to an embassy and apply for my visa. Uh, contact a travel agent for a hotel package and an airline ticket and uh, buy some forex and I'm done and I'm go I'm, I'm I'm off uh, to the destination but uh, right now what is going to happen is uh, uh, the entire process is going to take longer so uh, business travel is not going to happen because none of the companies are willing to put money on business travel so it is only the holiday makers who are going to travel in future and because they are holiday makers and they are not business uh, travelers, so they are uh, subject to much more uh, scrutinization by the authorities. So the entire process is going to be cumbersome. The it is going to be a little tiring. Uh, to an extent, initially it will be a little frustrating, but on the positive side of it is once you start traveling, once the the, the doors are open then whoever is wanting to travel will be the most welcome uh, traveler in the destination country. Tomorrow, if you want to travel to Dubai or to Hong Kong or to London or to Singapore, I mean, you will see people are waiting for you with open arms. Uh, please welcome, welcome to our country types. So there will be a much more personalized attention that will be given to you as a traveler. There will be, you will, uh, you will have a lot of uh, facilities which were unheard of in the market so far. Uh, but the planning and preparation is definitely going to be a little tiresome and cumbersome. But the experiential value of it is definitely going to be very, very, uh, very much uh, uh, enjoyable. Okay, uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, can we have the next question, please? If we have anything from the end of our final year master students. Uh, good evening, sir. My name yeah. is Shushmita. I'm a final year master student. Sir, uh, so I wanted to ask in the coming future, what can be the changes that we can see in the in, in, uh, sorry, in, incentive travel uh, program or sector, sir? I just answered that there will be a lot of uh, technology which will be there. Uh, so there will be less less of uh, human interference in the business. So right now what happens in the incentive market or in the mice market, it's, it's, exten it's, it's it is extensively lever oriented. I mean to to do a incentive program uh, uh, or to conduct an incentive travel program there are from right from the beginning till the end there are probably 50 or 100 people who are involved at different stages so once a technology takes over then probably one or two or three people are going to run the entire show altogether so now uh, that does not mean that uh, you have to be a software developer to to be there but you have to be a person who knows how to uh, run that so run that program for the benefit of your organization and to on on to that and also secondly is because 2020 has been a year of a lot of changes across so uh, there are new regulations which are coming up second there are a lot of uh, uh, changes in the in the immigration rules in the customs rules in the health rules across the globe uh, fourth is uh, the, the there are huge changes in uh, in the visa processes. So so these are these knowledge are not there in the public domain. So it is it is something which is going to be available in the market slowly as and when it happens. So your university cannot teach you this. We cannot tell you this. What is because we are not aware private to that information. So it it is it is a open for all information. So as and when that information comes in, you as a prospective employee of the trade, you have to uh, be hands on onto those kind of information and make a note of it and put that knowledge to the best of your your use. So you should be you know tomorrow when you start working or when you are applying for a job. Your interviewer might ask you some tricky questions which is related to the very recent changes which has happened in the recent past. 
So you cannot say that, oh, I, do, I don't know. I'm just a fresher. I do not know how what changes happened. But if you have that information, then you are going to impress the interviewer then and there and you may end up uh, getting a job. Or if you are already on the job, you may get a chance to grow up faster on the ladder with, with uh, acquisition of that knowledge into your benefit. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, sir. Do we have any other question, uh, especially from the end of our bachelor students final year? Very quickly, uh, yes, we can just uh, go through the questions. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, actually, uh, I'm I, I'm so energy. I'm from uh, B uh, BATA fifth semester, sir. So, uh, hi. World, uh, there are world organized like world organizations, global organizations who are uh, like IATA, WTTC, who are talking about like uh, who are predicting that the uh, tourism uh, industry would be back in track uh, by the year 2022. So okay. uh, as, I'm, as I'm a final year student, would you suggest me to go for higher, studi higher studies at this scenario? Like in this scenario, would you suggest me to go to higher studies or just uh, go, uh, go for a job right now, sir? No, what do you want to do? Do you are you are you are you uh, interested to work right now, or are you interested uh, for higher studies? Uh, sir, I'm obviously eager to work right now, sir. Uh, okay, uh, so I'll, can I be very honest to you? Yeah, uh, I sorry, sir, I didn't get you, sir. Issues, yeah. So, can I be very honest to you in giving that answer? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, the first thing is, please don't keep any benchmark for yourself in terms of expectations if you are looking for a job. Yes, sir. Because anything that was in the past, anything that you get to hear from your alumni, that I'm sure this is what even we used to do when we were passing out of our MBA. We used to make a list of people who had gone into which company and what was the salary. So that is how we used to put our expectations and we used to talk because 2020 has uh, turned everything into topsy turvy. So if you are if you want to work and go for working, if you want to gain working knowledge hands on. If earning money is your concern, uh, then I would suggest don't work right now and uh, rather focus on some extra skill acquisition. Till the time the market settles because right now jobs will be there next year, but uh, I'm afraid the kind of uh, salaries that will be offered to the freshers. Uh, it will be kind of insulting. So it may I'll, I'll be very glad if that doesn't happen to you or to any one of you, but uh, I'm getting the news of such things uh, at least in the Delhi Gurgaon Noida market because IIT TM students who were just uh, passed out very recently. They were going to different uh, places and uh, first of all, they were told that we are closed right now, so we don't have any openings for you or if you want to join, you can come and join in the month of Jan or Feb and we'll pay you like peanuts. So which is which is which will be very demoralizing, but nothing can beat the hands on experience that you will get while working in any organization. So if your focus is on gaining experience, please go ahead. Work to gain experience. Don't work to gain um, earn money. Or else if neither of this is any of your criteria, please work towards acquiring some extra skill sets. Make yourself multitasking. Learn something which is not taught to you in your university or in your college. It can be completely different, but it will help you on a long run. OK, sir. Thank you, sir. Any uh, all of you before you ask me any question, I was I was telling I told you something during the presentation and I would like to reiterate on that. Please work on your hobbies. Anything all of you, I'm sure everyone, everyone all of you must be having some hobbies, which is, I mean, maybe gardening is somebody's hobby, music is someone's hobby, cricket or football or sports or sprints or anything. Not not like watching TV or browsing internet. No, those are not hobbies. So something which is a constructive hobbies. Try working on them 
uh, more because if you if you if you work on that slowly once the market opens up you will know how to connect the dots you will you will know how to use your personal interest your personal hobby make money for you i wish i had a long time or uh, i wish bandita ma'am and uh, siddharth sir give me another scope in future so that i i will i would love to touch upon and discuss on this particular aspect that i am talking about making your hobby make money for you this is something which is really interesting and in future this is which what is going to happen for all of us thank you so much sir uh, i'll just uh, ask if there are any last questions uh, left so uh, students if you have any last questions for sir you may please ask that any question from the end of our third semester students of uh, ug uh Anything? good evening sir i am swapnalina from third semester bachelor and my question to you would be uh, that what would be the risks and constraints faced by tourists who are older in age risk did you ask risk uh yes sir uh what would be the risks and constraints faced by tourists who are older in age uh see the, the, it depends on the destination uh that one travels um because uh, old age is something which is uh, it is it is it is not relative to uh, a common factor it's uh, i mean if a old age person or a old age couple are going on a cruise holiday they basically don't have to do anything so they just all they have to do is just pack their bags and go there pay the money and they enjoy the vacation lying down on the sun roof and uh, uh, get get to eat five meals a day and get to see for different places on every day of sailing but if it is a trip which requires uh acclimatization which requires physical activities then probably they will have uh they will uh, face a little bit of uh, problem also what happens is uh, old age people are not technologically savvy as compared to the younger generation so they do not know they do not know how to make use of uh, the mobiles or the ipads or or the various technologies that are available so uh, what happens is when individually old age people are traveling they require more attention uh they cannot be treated as a regular traveler like like if you have a a group of children traveling with you automatically you become more attentive towards them because you know bacche hain kaam nahi kar sakte unko aata kuch hai nahi so unka ungli pakadna zaruri hai so same happens with the old age travelers so old age traveler it's there are there are companies in our country there are companies in delhi that i know they actually specialize and work exclusively only with old age travelers they form groups they send them they for do a fit tours for them so there i was once checking i was just uh, seeing their checklist a couple of years back their checklist is very different than the checklist that we used to have for regular travelers in cox and kings so it was a completely different thing ki uh, unka wake up call kaise dena hai unko khane mein kya dena hai unko uh, how do you alert them on things how do you ask them to pack your things uh, everything is very differently done so uh, other than i'm not touching upon the health aspect of it because you exclusively asked for old age people because old age people definitely will have some health precautions to be kept in mind so leaving aside that uh, their uh, their diet their their uh, interests uh, their physical capabilities of doing things or in activities all these all these things need to be kept in mind uh, uh, for a young uh, group young age group you can do a tour with uh, 10 hours or 12 hours of activity in a whole day right from uh, sunrise to sunset but if you do that uh, to an old age group uh, of travelers it could prove fatal so these are the things that we need to keep in mind so it's it's like 
they need to be treated as a group of children so that like you know everything is spoon fed to them that is how they will find the trip enjoyable so uh, you as a product designer or you as a back end office officer while while creating and curating the packages for them these are the things you need to keep in mind on uh, specifically these are the things that uh, needs to be worked upon okay sir thank you so much sir uh, thank you so much sir i believe uh, with that we will be ending the session today so uh, i would you know we can't really thank you enough for taking out time for the session and uh, you have uh, taken us through very important tourism statistics then the different possible scenarios post -co the covid 19 and uh, most importantly the importance of resilience and how there is going to be a lot of acquisitions mergers importance of travel advisors and last but not the least how especially one uh, needs to update oneself if and has to realign with all the updated knowledge and as well as developing the qualities hard skills soft skills that the industry would demand from the employees in the upcoming days so with that sir thank you sir once again and uh, you know we will look forward to many such sessions in the future and we would oh, like be, to hear to you it will be my time. pleasure it will be my yeah. pleasure thank you so much so it was really nice interacting with you guys i hope you have uh, paid attention and you have uh, something in your hand to take back home uh, three things last be patient don't lose heart two continuously keep working on uh, on your skill set aap uh, sare adults ho aap sab jaate honge kabhi na kabhi jo chicken mutton ke dukan hote hai na fish shops so jo kasai hota hai wo kya karta hai jab koi customer nahi hota hai samne have you seen what does he do wo apna churi chakku jo bhi hota hai utha ke na he keeps sharpening them so this is the time for you to sharpen your skills because no college no office no jobs please sharpen your skills gain as many skills that as you can and be very very patient uh, as i say travel is of blood and flesh you cannot robots cannot run tourism they could never do that so we humans uh, will always have the edge over any any technology we are the ones who are going to run uh, technology so and uh, last thing the third thing is any specific hobby that you have please work on that very seriously take it very seriously and take any one of you if you anyone i'm sure there will be in that in this huge group there will be some people who would be good in good at writing so anybody even if you are writing a uh, as a hobby please take it seriously once the market comes that is the skill set that is going to be looked after sought after first because there will be so many new things coming up in the market and everybody will need to hire content writers to tell stories to write stories about their products about their experiences and there will be a huge short shortage of uh, manpower in that particular field so you will be in travel trade but be, you will be a travel writer you know so don't think of travel trade as working for an airlines or a travel company or a hotel i mean in the in, in the entire uh, industry there are many portfolios so you will uh, as i said if uh, vanita bam gives me another scope i would like to touch upon that subject uh, in the near future so that will be and i'll make sure that uh, it, it it becomes a little more interesting for all of you and uh, more interactive absolutely so, sir and probably that time of there will be no slide shows there will be no presentations it will be all one to one discussion that's where uh, probably the the flow of knowledge happens uh, faster and easier thank you so much thank sir. you so much pleasure is entirely mine i hope i have not bored you enough so thank you so much you have a lovely nice weekend please stay safe and uh, wish you all good luck thank you so much thank you so much bye bye